So welcome everyone. Uh, good afternoon if you're on the East Coast. Good morning if you're on the West or wherever you are uh, joining us from. Welcome to the Master of Finance Information session offered at the Smith, out of Smith School of Business at, out of Toronto. I'll introduce myself in a second, but first we like to get started with a land acknowledgement. So Smith Toronto is situated on the traditional territory of the Huron Wendat and the Puton First Nations, the Seneca and the Mississaugas of the Credit River. We are grateful to be able to live, learn and play on these lands. So if you're here, hopefully you're here for the Master of Finance information session, a little bit about the Master of Finance uh, program offered at Smith. So this is a one year while you work program. So many people who are taking the program are working, but it's not a requirement for the program for you to be working at the same time as taking the program. There are some benefits that comes from being uh, employed while taking the program, which I'll discuss a little bit later. This program is offered at Smith out of Smith, Toronto. So we are located downtown Toronto. Uh, it's, out of, it's offered out of our facility here. And the program is offered in two formats, which I'll discuss throughout the presentation. So we have an in-person format and a, and a blended format. Um, please note that if you have to jump off the call for any reasons, if you are registered, since you're here, you are registered, you will receive a copy of this information session as well. So my name is Gary Hines. I'm the director for the Master of Finance program here at Smith. A little bit about myself. I came to Canada as an international student in 2016 to pursue my Master of International Business at the same Smith School of Business. So I've lived in, um, in Kingston. After completing my degree, I then started working with the Master of Finance program as a program manager. And, you know, any more years, I'm here uh, reporting as the director for the program. So I am based out of Toronto. So that image on the right here is just part of our facility. We have an excellent facility here uh, in Toronto. So I'm currently in the office uh, coming to you from Smith, Toronto. And I'm gonna be going through this information session with you. So this is part of my roles and responsibility as the director. I'm also, if you are interested in the program, part of the application process will be an interview with myself. I uh, currently am in charge of the running of the program. So my role, uh, my roles and responsibility entails recruitment uh, for students for the program and the delivery of the program. So while you're in the program, you will interact with me and the program manager during that time. So what is the Master of Finance program? So our program gives you a, a deeper and broader understanding of finance. Um, so the knowledge and the tools that you're learning in our program is not it's not theoretical. You're not just learning about theories in a book. We're giving you practical and real world applications. So you remember I mentioned earlier that the program is a while you work program. So a lot of the things that you're going to be learning while you're in this program can be applicable in your workplace the next day off. We have many stories of individuals telling us how they were able to apply lessons that they learned the night before in their roles and it was very helpful and beneficial to them. So you'll get a solid understanding of the current financial climate and market trends. And I wanna say this is an excellent time if you are considering taking this program because what's happening in the market right now where we see we have a lot of talks of recession. I could give you a little bit of a story, not too long of course, uh, about when I pursued my undergraduate degree uh, this was in 2008. I did my undergrad degree, and this was, as you may all remember, this was during the financial crisis. So I did my degree in economics, and during that time, seeing what was happening in the market, it was really fascinating to learn, to see what you were learning in the books actually playing out in real time. So when they're talking about quantitative easing and talking about the Fed and what they're doing, so you weren't just learning things in a book, but you're actually seeing that, up, that happening in the real world. And I think that's why this is an excellent time to take a program like this. 
because a lot of the things that you're going to be learning about in the in the program, you know, you're going to be having so much more in depth conversations about what's happening in the market that will be really beneficial for you. So the program is not only going to give you that type of understanding uh, and helping you develop uh, the your applications. Um, we also develop your soft skills. So we have a course in communication and finance where we help you take these very, very large um, information. And you know, when you have to do a presentation, people may not have the same level of information or knowledge that you have. So we're trying to help you present it in a way that is palatable to somebody who may not have as much information, but they don't want you to go into that level of detail. So we help you communicate uh, a lot of the financial concepts that you may understand. Our program is heavily teams based, so you will be working with a, pro, uh, a team throughout the, the program, um, except for when you're doing your electives. So you will be working with a, a team, um, a very diverse team is what we put together. Uh, and you will meet your team at the residential session. There's also an uh, opportunity for you to have like personal development uh, in terms of developing a lot of your soft skills. So there will be presentations throughout the program. There are different ways that you are, we evaluate our students, whether it be in person, uh, in class exams, quizzes, and as I mentioned, presentations. And during the time in the program, you will have uh, access to our career uh, center, so the CAC. So they will, I'll talk a little bit more about them, but we do have designated people who can help you. If you are looking to make that transition in your career, you're looking to break into finance, we do have a designated career advancement center and people who are here to help you along the way. So if you have any questions as well, can you please save them for the end, unless I went through something that you may not understand, um, because I feel like I may cover a lot of the questions that you have. So in terms of the format uh, for our program, the in-person format uh, happens in our facility downtown Toronto. So we have a beautiful uh, facility here. We're minutes away from Union Station. So we're very conveniently located. If you are working on Bay Street, it's just minutes away from Bay Street. And we have a fantastic 360 view of downtown Toronto. So our program only has one start for the year. So we only start during uh, June every year. That's when we begin and our program runs all the way until April. So if you are doing the in-person format, your classes will be held live in Smith, Toronto. Our classes occur once per week and once every alternating weekend. So our classes are usually from 6 p.m. because we are catering for the students who are going to be working during that time. We are located 200 Front Street West. So if you go and you put that into your Google Maps, you'll be able to see how conveniently we are located. So we do have a one week residential session at Queens University in Kingston. And we also have a four day residential session at Smith Toronto. I'm gonna to talk a little bit more about that to, uh, in a second. And as I mentioned earlier, we do have ongoing coaching and career support that you're going to receive throughout your time in the program. There are also clubs, case competitions, and networking events that happen throughout that year, which I'll get into again a little bit more in more detail. So if you're interested in the blended format, this is a great opportunity for you, given that you know we have moved into a more virtual and hybrid uh, hybrid model in terms of our working. So this is a great delivery model. We, it's a delivery of mixed and online, a mix of online and live formats. So it gives you flexibility to take the classes from wherever you are in the world. Um, we do require you to be here for the residential sessions, um, but it's an excellent opportunity. And, and Smith has been doing virtual for many years. So the, the pandemic didn't make us have to pivot over and learn all these new things. Smith actually has programs that have been running for years before the pandemic even occurred. We had programs that were running virtually. So we've been able to do this really well. When the pandemic hit, it was very easy for us to switch to that online model because we've, as I mentioned, we've been doing this for so many years. 
So the, pro, the blended format is very similar to the live uh, format. It's going to happen, it's going to start the same time as in person. So it, they run concurrently. Uh, so it's one start day is the same June to April. And it's again, aligned with the in-person format. It's a blend of learning live. Uh, so there's asynchronous and synchronous learning and classes happen one weeknight every week and one day every other weekend. So as I mentioned, you can take this from any way where around the world, you will be required to do come in person for that one week residential and the four days in Toronto. And you will receive the same support as in-person students uh, for the ongoing coaching, career support, you will have all that. You will be able to take part in the case competitions. You will have access to any of the clubs. You will be able to do that. So here's just a little breakdown of the, and a comparison of the in-person and blended, just so it's a little bit more palatable for you. So again, the program start dates are the same. Classes will occur for in-person on the evening and weekend classes are held at Smith Toronto. We do have that blended format, which is for our blended uh, students. We, we do have the format of com combining asynchronous learning and live instruction at Smith uh, Toronto and in Kingston. So in terms of the teams, yes, you still will be working in a team if you are deciding to take the in-person. If you are take, taking the blended, you will still be working with a virtual team. And we do have a team building workshop that happens in person during our residential session in Kingston. In terms of the curriculum, they will be the same. You are going to be taking the same courses. However, when it comes to our electives, uh, if you are taking the blended program, there will be a limited number of choices because there are some courses that are not offered in person or not offered remotely. They're offered in person and you would be required, to, if you are looking to take those courses, you will be required to come into Smith Toronto to take them. In terms of our curriculum, here are some of our core courses. So our, our curriculum is made up of 10 courses. So you're gonna be doing 10 courses during your time. Uh, eight of those courses are going to be core courses. These are the core courses here. And then we have five electives that we offer every year. Out of those five, you will be required to take two. So we start off our program with corporate finance and financial statement analysis, quantitative analysis and economics, advanced financial modeling, which is taught, taught by the Marquee Group which is one of Canada's premier modeling uh, organization. They teach at banks. Uh, they, have, they hold courses all over the world. If you're currently working at one of the major banks in Canada, uh, you may have heard or even taken one of their courses. So they are one of our lecturers for the program. So what financial modeling does, it will, they will teach you how to build a model from scratch. We then have equity markets, fixed income instruments and markets, advanced portfolio management, communication and finance, which I mentioned earlier. Um, then we wrap up our core courses with derivatives. Then after derivatives, we will move on to our electives. Um, one of the things that we do is that we're not very stagnant when it comes to our course offerings. So we're always constantly looking to see what is uh, out there in the market because we want to make sure that our students when they graduate from the program they can be very competitive and get into the area and the field that they want to. So out of these five elective courses that we offer students will have the opportunity to select two. So our electives these this being offered this year and it may be the same as for next year but who knows there could be some changes. Financial technology and innovation intro to alternative investments investment banking AI and finance and the growing and ever popular sustainable finance. So this was one of the courses that was introduced a couple of years ago, which is growing very, very popular um, in the program. And we're happy to have it. So I mentioned to you a little while ago that this program is offered in Smith, Auto Smith, Toronto, but I did mention about the residential session. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the residential sessions and, you know, why do we do it since, you know, our program is a wildly work program. So our residential session in Kingston, this is how we kick off our program. We start off our program in Kingston, Ontario. This, if you're looking at the screen right now, this is a picture of Goods Hall and Kingston in the summertime is just beautiful. So we would be spending one week there. So why do we do this? We do this for a couple of reasons. 
One, if you weren't a student at Queens, uh, you, weren't, you didn't attend Queens prior, you would not have the opportunity to go to school. So we want you to be able to come to the facility, see like home base as you, as you would have it, see where uh, other, uh, other programs run out of. Now we do have a commerce program that has been around for many, many years that run out of here. Um, so it's an excellent facility. Um, if you look at that little red brick, that's the older building that's been around for many, many years. And then the new wing is where we usually have our classes. The next reason why we do this and we ask students to, you know, take that week off and come and spend with us in Kingston is that we want you to be able to feel like a full-time student during that week. Um, when you take this program and you're taking it like every every weeknight, you're coming here once a week and then every other weekend, you don't get a chance to really feel like a full-time student. You, you, so we want you to be able to come here, take that week, feel like a full-time student. And the other benefit of doing this is that you get to, to feel, you get to, to network with a lot of your classmates. You get to meet them, you get to interact with them, get to know them, get to meet your teammates, get to, get to know them. And then when you start to have classes on, uh, in Toronto, everything just feels a little bit easier because it could be a little bit difficult to form like proper friendships and relationships when you're only coming in once uh, a week or twice if you're having class on that weekend. The other great reason why we do this is that we're able to finish one of our courses during that time. So corporate finance actually is completed during that week, which allows us to be able to complete this program in one year. So this is a, a sample of our residential session in Kingston. And it's fun. We do have fun. Don't get me wrong, but it is a busy and intense week. So our schedules are typically packed with courses, um, but then we do have fun activities planned, such as a Smith challenge. Uh, we do have a both cruise that we plan, uh, we have every year, and there are other little activities sprinkled around. Uh, so trust me, it is a really fun time. It's one of the best experiences that we have in while you're in the program. And students always ask, oh, are we going to get to go back to Kingston uh, again? And we always have to say, unfortunately, you're only going to be going for this week, but then you have the opportunity to return for graduation and you can show your family and friends where you were, where you uh, went out to eat and drink with your, your new friends in the program. So let's talk a little bit about how you're going to be supported during your time in the program. You know, we do have career support. Uh, you can make book a meeting with a career coach uh, uh, while you're here in the program, and they will help you with a lot of things, you know, job search, uh, salary negotiation, your interview preparation. So you can book as many meetings as you want with this uh, career coach, but we do have a designated uh, corporate team as well that go out to the big banks, pension funds, hedge funds, insurance companies, and they always, they all recruit from the university. They recruit from the program. They have different workshops, different seminars. We have alumni panel discussions and we have uh, career events as well. So there are a lot of opportunities for you to, to be able to network, uh, grow your network and have interviews and get opportunities to break into the world of finance. Or, you know, even if you're just looking to grow in your career, let's say you've been working in finance for many years and you're just looking to grow your career or just, you know, keep growing and learning. Cause that's something that we always promote here at the school is continuous learning. So there's always opportunities to, to learning different ways during the program. And you are going to be supported here through our career services. So this program, as we mentioned, is a lot of experiential learning. Um, we do take part in competitions every year. Um, we have the Smith Women in Finance case competition that is uh, offered through us, through this program, um, through our SWIFT, our SWIFT group. We take part every year in the CFA Ethics Challenge, CFA Research Challenge, which we're currently forming our teams for, which they will be participating. We have won this competition in the past and our team went on to compete in the nationals as well. So it's an excellent opportunity for you to, I guess, continue to grow your network and challenge yourself and push yourself. So it's an excellent opportunity. Uh, Van Berkham Small Cap Case Competition we take part in and the National Investment Banking Competition. 
Um, we haven't seen any, we haven't seen uh, anything from the NIBC, but the other case competitions we are participating in this year. There are other ways you can get involved while you're in the program. Every, every year we have um, our sections. So if you're in the program, we normally have two sections. Uh, we normally have a class executive for both sections. So a class president voted in by your peers in the class. You can run for the class president and just help with the overall experience of the students in the program. And I mentioned we have the Smith Women in Finance. Uh, they're the ones that they do a lot of networking events. They do the case competitions that I mentioned earlier. Uh, it's a great way for women to just get involved in the, the program. And we love promoting women in finance. We also have QAF, which stands for the Queen's University Alternative Asset Fund. It's a hedge fund, a fund of fund. It's, I think, still one of the only one where students are managing real money. Currently, they're managing around $600,000 in their portfolio. This program was started by M the MBA students, and it was run in conjunction with the MFIN students. Now, because there's so much information and data that the students want to ensure that they can leverage, it's now run in conjunction with all of the other programs. It's a very popular, popular club, and it's completely student run. It's quite impressive what they do. Um, it's it's, it's, uh, it's uh, one of the staples that we have here at the Smith School of Business and for the MFIN program. And then we also have our EDII club, which if students are interested in being a part, they can uh, also join that. It's all about promoting equity, diversity, inclusion, and ind indigeneity within the school. We want to make sure that all of our students, when they are in the program, they feel welcome. And we want you to be able to bring your full and authentic self to the program. Uh, and we want to make sure that you have a great experience and time while you're at the Smith School of Business. So here is one of our past uh, students, uh, basically speaking a little bit about his experience in Quaff. I'm not going to read everything here, but this is just one of the quotes that they that he mentioned. As he said, we were investing real money, so we had to do real re research. When I came in as CEO, so he was a CEO of Quaff during his time in the program. Uh, this is Julius. I wanted to ensure there was a process around everything. I used what we were doing as part of the CFA Research Challenge and brought it to Quaff. So he participated in a lot of activities during his time in the program, and he was working at the same time. So it was a lot, but he was able to do it. Also, we have different workshops that we offer every year. Uh, we have the merger modeling, capital restructuring modeling. These are all being both being taught by the same marquee group who will be teaching the financial modeling course. Uh, we do have a CFA prep that we encourage our students to take. Then we have additional offerings from like where students can develop their uh, data skills with R, their uh, Python, uh, Tableau. And then we want to continue students to, you know, get leadership experience as well. So there are opportunities for that for you to continue to grow and develop while in, this, in the program. In terms of partnerships, we are a partner of the CFA Institute and Kaya. So when they have, we also offer scholarships if you are writing the CFA and if you're interested in writing the, the Kaya exam, we do have scholarships available for you. And because we are a partner of these institutions, if they have any networking, any type of events, they will send out an invitation to the school, which we can always pass on to our students. So there's other opportunities to network and build and build relationships with these partners. We're also a proud partner of Game Plan and the Canadian Olympic Committee. So we have sometimes we have students who are, um, we have athletes, sorry, not students. We have athletes who become students in the program. Uh, so the, this partnership allows uh, athletes who are looking to, you know, develop life after they're com finished competing. So we do have some students who are still competing in the Olympics and they sometimes take breaks to go compete and then come back, continue with the program. So this is a proud relationship that we have with the Canadian Olympic com Committee, and we're happy to see that going forward. In terms of our class profile, here's a typical look at our, our pro program. Uh, this year we have 86 students. 
the average age is around 31. We have a little bit more than five years work experience. As you can see in terms of the CFA designation, we have a mix of people who have completed their CFA level one, 9% uh, have already completed level two and three, and some people are even charter holders. So our program is aligned with the CFA and we have a CFA, but we, we don't help you prepare for the CFA. That's a very important distinction that this program takes it another level. So it's not helping you prepare for the CFA. So if you were thinking that this program can help you become um, a charter holder, it's not going to really help you in terms of like all the courses are geared towards helping you prepare for the CFA. We do cover some things that the CFA do, the already covers, but we take it a little bit deeper uh, having courses like communication and finance, financial modeling. These are different courses that we offer that helps uh, help us distinguish ourselves for that. And even if you're looking to do a PhD, again, this program is not really designated or designed to help you do more research if you're looking to do a PhD. It's not to say that you can't, but this program is not designed for that. It's a very practical program to help you develop, continue growing your skills. And as I mentioned, the, not, the information that you're getting in the program will help you in, the, in your job the next day. Um, in, terms of our, in terms of diversity, uh, we do have a very diverse class here. It's just some of the citizenship that you would see in our program. Um, we have students from all over the world. Uh, we have 67% are male, 33% female, 80% of our students are domestic and 20% are international. So you get a very diverse class. So your team uh, will be made up of a very diverse uh, group of individuals. So let's talk about the application process. So this, this uh, it's very easy to apply to our programs. Um, all you have to do is submit a preliminary, preliminary application and you'll be paired with the application advisor. So Ryan Hill is the application advisor. He's on the call today along with uh, Nikkei. Nikkei is our recruitment advisor. So when you send, submit an, a preliminary application, you're, that application is not going into a black hole you're actually going to be paired with a person who is going to help you and help you through the entire process uh, in that application. And it's very simple to do it. All we need is a copy of your resume and an unofficial transcript. That's it, pretty easy. Uh, you don't have to pay anything for your application. Uh, even if you have an inquiry, you want to see if you qualify for the program, that's all we ask. Uh, a lot of times students will send us information and asking very uh, specific. Uh, we take everything on a case by case basis. So you may not have everything that we look for in terms of the admissions process, but there may be things that make up for it. So let's just talk a little bit about what we look for in terms of our admissions. So we typically ask for an undergraduate degree because this is a master's program, minimum of two years relevant work experience. So if you've been working in finance or you've been doing something finance related, that's great. We do require the successful completion of a GMAT or a GRE or a successful completion of the CFA level one. To complete your entire application, then you would need letters of reference, your resume, cover letter, and as I mentioned earlier, you will have an interview with me, which is really informal. But if you don't have the necessary work experience, then we will consider if you have strong internships, if you have a really good GMAT score, or you've completed level one of your CFA, an undergraduate degree in business or economics is also considered. So we do have a lot of ways, a lot of things that we look at when we're considering your application. So again, all you would need to do to start the application process is just a copy of your resume and an unofficial transcript. That's all you need to start the process and there's no fee required for that. And then we will look at your application again on a case by case basis to make that evaluation. So these things here are not like set in stone, like we're not very hard lined in terms of, oh, you don't have this, you don't have that, like you don't check all those boxes, you're not, uh, you're not going to be admitted. We take everything and try to take your experience that you've attained throughout your lifetime, we take that everything that's on your resume and your grades, and we would use that in terms of making a decision. So we don't take all of these like everything is not like a checkbox for us. 
In terms of fees, here is what it currently costs, and these are subject to change uh, based on government and board approval. Currently, our fees are, if you're a domestic student, it'll be 40,300. International students, 73,300. And this fee covers everything from your tuition, books in the program, your case, case study, uh, all everything that you need for the program. For those residential sessions that I mentioned, the meals and accommodation will be covered. The only thing you have to worry about in terms of the residential sessions in Kingston is getting to Kingston and returning home from Kingston. But we will take care of your meals, parking if you're driving, and your accommodation. Uh, we will have, if you are taking part in the case competition and you're required to travel, you have to go to Montreal for one of them, or you have to go to Vancouver, or you get to the nationals and you're representing the school in New York, we would, that fee is also covered, covering the cost of that. So it's a really great opportunity um, for you to take it. And this fees are, if you are a domestic student, the program is eligible for OSAP as well. All right, so if you're interested in taking the program, here is where you can submit that preliminary application, smithqueens.com slash mfin. Uh, that's it from me. I'm going to look to see if there are any questions that I can answer right now. I've been talking for a while and I wanna turn it on over to you to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you so much for, for uh, being here. So I'm just going to go to my little Q&A box and I will read any questions that you may have. When Ryan and Nikkei are also here, so if you see somebody typing, they're also going to answer any questions uh, ahead of time as well. All right, I think I did a really great job because I'm not seeing any questions. So it seems like I was super clear and everybody understands everything about the Master of Finance program offered by Smith, but I'm going to give it a few seconds because sometimes people can be can be typing. Um, and here we go. Does the two year, this is the first question, does the two year work experience include co-op or internship? Yeah. So if you have something like that, something that has, we, we just need to see what you've done. And when I say two years, it has to be two years at the start of the program. So not the start of your application. So let's say you have one and a half year right now, but by the start of the program that makes up two years, that all that also counts. Great questions. I'm gonna add that one was answered live. Hi Gary, thanks for sharing all the info. May I ask if the diploma would be the same as a two format? Yeah, so if you are graduating from the program, it's you're receiving a degree from Queen's University, the Smith School of Business, there is no distinction that, oh, I took this online versus I took this in person. It's going to be the same learning outcomes. You're going to be doing the same, same evaluations as if you were doing it in person. So the degree will be the same. Everything will be the same except the, the, the delivery format. All right, next question for the clubs and workshops. Are these opportunities offering in both in person and virtually? I see Ryan is typing an answer, but I can answer this for anyone else who is interested. Yes. So everything that you're going to be getting in person and online will be the same. So I want to make, I also have to make sure that I stress this. If you are interested in taking the online version and you're an international student, the only thing is you will not receive a work permit following the, the end of the program. Based on Canadian laws, they will require anyone interested in a work permit, have, they would have had to live in Canada. So if you're looking at taking this program and you're an international student and you're not here, they will not recognize that you were not here. You will not get a work permit following the program. So just want to make sure that that is clear. But everything else you will have the opportunity to partake in. Um, in case competitions, clubs, yes, you will have that opportunity. All right, let's see the next question here. Are there any collaborations with the Sustainable Finance Institute? 
Not at the moment. There is not a collaboration. It is taught, one of the, that course is taught by the head of the institute, Sean Clary. So it is taught by him. So I guess a lot of the information you will be learning in that class will be directly linked with the Institute of the Sustainable Finance Institute. But there's no one-to-one no -one connection um, as yet or collaborations with the with the Institute. Um, that's something that could be done in the pipeline. Great questions, everyone. Sorry. All right. So my all right, let's go to the next question. One last question. Uh, so this person asked a question prior, so they're saying one last question. If I have other designations, such as a CPA, is it possible to get the G, so GMAT, GRE waived, or is GMAT, GRE a must? So currently the program is recognizing the CPA if you've taken it in North America. Um, we look at this on a case-by-case -case basis, but if you've taken your CPA in North America, we will consider waiving the GMAT or the GRE for um, admission. Excuse me. Okay, sorry. It's the questions are just jumping up and down, so I'm just trying to make sure that I can see everything. And I also have uh, Nikkei and Ryan helping me answer some of the questions. Uh, okay, uh, if I obtain CFA level one, would GRE or GMAT be waived? Yes. So if you have your CFA level one, you're not required to take the GMAT or the GRE. I just thought that would be helpful for anyone who may, may be confused about the, the requirement for the GMAT, GRE. Yeah, so if you have CFA level one, CFA level two, or you're a charter holder, you're not required to take uh, the GMAT or the GRE. Okay, let's see. Oh, this is a great question. What is the deadline for domestic application? And I don't think I address this, so I want to address this. Um, I want to address this here. So the great thing about our program is that we offer, we run, and we operate on a rolling admissions basis. So we don't have any deadline. So there's no first, second round, third round. We offer it on a rolling admissions. If you can get all your documents into us the day before the program begins you can get admitted into the program. So we operate on a role in admissions basis. So there's no deadline for the program. That's a great, great question right there. Okay, I think, I think. All right, I think I just answered this last, that, that uh, somebody else had the same question. So I think I've answered that for, for you as well. I don't see any other questions coming in. So I think we may be good. And I thank Ryan and Nikkei for their help answering some of the questions in the chat. All right, so I think, I think that's it. I think we're good. So once again, um, thank you so much for attending the information session. I just wanted to reiterate. If you are interested in the program, you can just submit a copy of your unofficial transcript and a resume. You are not you you are you are not required to pay anything for that. If you think you may not be eligible for the program, we still encourage you to submit that because that will help us make a better determination. Everybody's profile is different. Everybody has different experiences, so we want to make sure that we give everyone the opportunity to, to submit their information and then we'll look at them on an individual basis. There is no deadline for the, the application process. All you have to do is submit that before the program starts. So once the program starts, that's like the, the deadline. But other than that, you should be fine. But anyways, uh, thank you so much for joining me here for this information session. Since you are registered, you will receive a copy of this presentation. So you will get more information in case there was anything that was missed. Um, and we will be uploading this to our YouTube channel as well. So you can always check that out. Or if you're even interested in any other programs, we do have a lot of information sessions on there. Okay, I do have one more question that I can take before I jump off. Oh, I think Ryan is helping me with that one. So, 
I am sure that I need a visa for students to live in Canada. And here is my question. Could you help me with that? Or I need to send my info to the government myself. So if you're interested in getting your student visa, we typically just provide the documents that you need to show that you are uh, an applicant uh, or you are enrolled in the program. So we will send you all the necessary information to help you with that process, but everything else would be, you would be required to provide that to the government because everybody again is a case by case basis. So you'll have to provide that information to them, but we will send documents for you, for you to show that you are in, in, in enrolled in the program. So you will get those documents. All right, so thank you everyone. Uh, please enjoy the rest of your day. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, and thank you for spending some time with, here with us. Until the next time. Okay, bye-bye.